Alrighty, so I have an interesting update for you guys today on some of the actions that Canada's Wonderland could potentially be taking moving forward to deal with. Um, with that being said, um, I just want to stress that all the things presented in this presentation are just ideas and there's nothing confirmed. So I'm just going to present the ideas today and hopefully you guys can comment down below what you think um, is an interesting concept and what you would like to see changed or if you agree with some of these things, or if you'd like to see more. So we'll start off with some of the commitments they're gonna do. Um, sorry, again, some of the commitments they're discussing that they might do. So number one, all food service associates wear gloves when handling and serving food and beverages. Two, touchless payment options available for debit and credit card users. Three, routine sanitation performed in kitchens and restrooms. Four, daily cleaning of all rides, attractions, and games, increased safety measures and operational changes, one, masks for all associates, two, temperature screening of associates and guests prior to admission, three, managed capacity and meter metering of guest traffic at park entry, four, directional signage and social distance reminders throughout park, five, clear plastic shields at all cashier stations, Six, increased frequency of cleaning and disinfecting of all high touch areas. And number seven, hand sanitizer dispensers distributed throughout the park. Those options are very well known. Um, and I do wanna stress what I'm about to discuss is not what we've been hearing from other parks um, and things that we have not seen. So this is where Wonderland um, is presenting some ideas that other parks haven't even considered. I'm going to go over those because it gets really interesting and some of them I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that. But we'll talk about those and I want to hear from you guys down below. So I guess we'll get right into it. Um, so the first one is some of the options they're going to do with handling attendance. So they present you with four options and they want you to rate them from one to four on most ones, uh, what you like the best and what you like the least. So the option number one was extending park hours from 8 a.m. to midnight with no restrictions on the number of guests in the park. However, guests would need to enter the park at specific times for provided by the park. Option number two was open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. with no restrictions on the number of guests in the park. Option number three was open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., but tickets would be sold on a first come, first serve basis, and only half the usual number of guests on a typical summer day would be allowed in the park. Option number four, dividing the park day in half, with guests purchasing tickets for either half either 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 4 p.m. to midnight. Guests could choose which time window to attend, but the number of guests allowed in each window would be limited. So honestly, out of the four options, I picked extending park hours from 8 a.m. to midnight with no restrictions on the number of guests in park. However, um, limiting the amount of guests at front gate, because we all know Wonderland gets super overcrowded at front gate, um, was my favorite option. Um, number two would have been dividing the park into two day parts, um, would have been my second favorite option. Number three is what every other park is doing. Uh, so open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., but tickets would be sold at a first come, first serve basis. Um, that is a good option, and a lot of parks have chosen to do that as an option, but I feel like there's a better way of handling it. Like, I like the, um, idea that Wonderland's presenting with extending park hours from 8 a.m. to midnight, um, and kind of limiting the amount of guest flow to help with attendance and then of course with legislative um laws going around with what's going on they would limit based off of what requirements the city or the province have set for them um that being said definitely want to hear from you guys which of the four options do you prefer um in the comment section down below so definitely comment down below which do you prefer um again i like the idea that they're talking about extending the operating calendar or operating hours in two of the options so that's an interesting topic to take away from what Wonderland has presented in this survey. So it looks like they're definitely looking at an 8 a.m. to midnight um, operations uh, calendar or hourly, whatever you wanna call it. That being said, they present a third um, question. So relative to a typical busy summer day, how much would you prefer that an amusement park reduce the number of people it allows in, if at all, for health and safety reasons? Reduce it by 75%, reduce it by 50%, reduce it by 25% or reduce, but not sure by how much or no reduction. So I chose reduce by 50%. That just seems the most um, logical way to do it to start off. And then obviously like Disney, um, you can up it as the weeks go on and on and things get more controlled. We're, we can't live in fear forever. So we're obviously gonna have to uh, 
uh, make some changes as we move along. So these are some interesting questions. You're only allowed to select one from most likely to visit and one from least likely to visit, and they present you with all these options. So this one is no offering concerts or parades, requiring all employees to wear masks, adding thermal image scanners at the park entrances to monitor for those for high temperatures, opening and operating the parks as it was bid, and cleaning all seats and restraints in ride vehicles between rides. Um, then it goes on to ask you more, reducing the number of people allowed in the park at one time, providing see-through shields between guests and cashiers, implementing social distancing, requiring all guests have their temperature taken again, requiring all guests sign a health declaration before entering the park. So again, very interesting option. So this, the fourth one was something I had suggested in one of my videos, or I think it was my story on Instagram. Should theme parks make guests sign something when entering the park? Would you feel comfortable doing that? I'm not against it. I mean, like, it's, it's just interesting how that would be handled and how they would go about that. Are you signing that you don't have it? Are you signing that you... Your Wonderland's not responsible if you are to get something at the park. Um, but moving forward, not offering indoor attractions or shows, offering food and beverage ordering and pickup with an app, implementing social distancing again, requiring all employees to wear masks, requiring food and beverage employees to wear gloves. Very basic stuff there. Again, you have to pick one that's most likely and one that's least likely to make you visit. Offering touchless payment throughout the park, requiring all guests to receive a rapid test before entering the park, limiting the number of guests in restrooms at any given time, opening and operating the park as it was pre, um, reducing the number of people allowed in the park at one time. Again, very common things. Uh, moving forward though, attendance uh, present at all times to keep restrooms clean, not offering concerts and parades, implementing social distancing when seated for a restaurant and shows, implementing social distancing, implementing arrival times for park entry rather than a large a crowd arriving at once. Again, this is something that is very obvious um, for Canada's Wonderland. They have a huge crowd that gathers at the front gate, and obviously this is something they want to ask uh, people in the survey. Cleaning all handrails and door handles frequently, providing automatic sanitizer dispensers throughout the park, requiring all guests have their temperature taken before entering the park, requiring guests sit in every other row on transportation, rides, and attractions, implementing arrival times for park entry rather than a large crowd arriving at once. Again, they keep stressing that. Um, they keep wanting to hear your opinion on that. And um, as you answered, things were limited down, so it got even more interesting. There is one thing in here that, uh, I think there's two things in here that I'm kind of like iffy about, and I definitely want to hear your guys' opinions on them. Limiting the number of guests in restrooms at any given time, requiring guest bags be see-through, to eliminate the need for security to touch personal items. That is such a great topic of discussion. Requiring guests sit in every other row in transportation rides, but not offering indoor attractions or shows, implementing social distancing and seated for restaurant and shows. Um, so requiring see-through bags. Wow, that's, what? <laughs> Attendance present at all times to keep restrooms clean. All food and beverages served by an employee rather than self-served by guests. Requiring all employees receive a rapid test before starting work each day offering food and beverage ordering at pickup with an app, requiring all guests receive the same rapid test before entering the park. So things are getting interesting in terms of suggestions on how to open. Definitely curious to um, see what you guys think about that. Requiring all guests receive a test before entering the park, requiring guests to wear masks, not offering indoor attractions or shows, requiring all guests have their temperatures taken before entering the park, cleaning all seats, restraints in ride vehicles between rides. So I'll talk about this. I think it's just pretty much repeating a lot of the same options, getting how you feel about them. So the see-through bags, I do not like. Um, the fact that you'll have to go out and purchase a see-through bag. Where do you get a see-through bag, first of all? Amazon, I guess. Um, and then hoping that arrives in time for you to go to the park. I guess it's not a big issue for um, roller coaster enthusiasts. I don't think a lot of them bring bags. Um, but for someone that has cameras or the average guest, that's a big thing to require. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a hard thing to implement. So I'd, I'd like to see how they do that. And then the rapid test, that's a big one. I'm assuming when they say rapid test, they're referring to the blood test, the quick little prick of the finger. And it tells you um, within, I think it's like five to 15 minutes, if you have it. I don't think they're referring to the cotton swab down your nose. I think it's the quick um, little blood test thing there. Nothing harmful, blah, 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 but that's still a big requirement just to go into a theme park. So it's definitely interesting to see what guests and how they would feel about that, how people are answering these surveys. Again, everything presented in this is not 
um, stuff they're going to do. They're getting feedback from guests and their surveys on how they feel about some of these options uh, being presented. And I'm assuming that because these are different from other Cedar Fair parks and American parks, these are things that maybe have been presented to them from uh, the Ontario government or even the CDC or um, the Canadian top doctor or the Ontario top doctor. I'm assuming that these are things that they have discussed and that's why they're presenting them as options. So it'll be super interesting. Um, definitely curious to see what you guys uh, have to say down below in the comments section. Um, hope you enjoyed this quick update on some of the options that Canada's Wonderland is potentially considering for the 2020-2021 season. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm glad I'm back. Uh, thank God my uh, laptop is working again. And uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying your long weekend here in Canada. Um, happy May 2-4. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.